The movie opens up in the year 2012, in a small neighborhood in London. People are going about their daily lives, and everything seems to be normal. Just then, an elderly woman, Maeve, senses something in the area and stops. She seems worried, as if she has felt an external force. One of the neighbors, Trish, asks Maeve if she is alright, but the old lady mentions that it's happening again. Out of nowhere, she rushes to the nearby kids and orders them to get inside their homes. The neighbors are perplexed, as it is a perfectly normal day, with no signs of any danger. But Maeve keeps saying it's happening again. Meanwhile, we are shown the poster of a missing girl, signaling that she was abducted not so long ago. As Maeve is trying to convince her neighbors, Trisha's daughter Chloe watches everything unfold from her room across the street. She is singing her favorite song, which talks about the bird, Kookaburra. She then sits on her desk and starts sketching a picture of one of the neighbor boys who is playing outside. Surprisingly, as soon as she finishes the sketch, the boy boy vanishes into thin air, as if he has been teleported. Maeve and the boy's father realize that another abduction has taken place, but they can do nothing about it, aside from maybe taking away that girl's crayons. Following this, we are introduced to the main protagonist, the doctor, and his accomplice, Rose. The two are time travelers who have been tasked with fixing any anomalies in the timeline. They have come into this world through their teleportation portal. However, this time, they are simply there to witness the opening ceremony of the 20. 12 London Olympics. As the two are walking through the same neighborhood, they come across the posters of the missing children. The doctor, being a curious individual, doesn't believe that someone in a quiet neighborhood like this one is capable of abducting children. Hence, he goes around the neighborhood and starts inspecting. When he reaches near the house where the last boy disappeared, he suddenly senses a wave of energy, thus concluding that the abductions are related to something supernatural. Meanwhile, Rose talks to a maintenance worker named Kel, who has been fixed the potholes in the neighborhood. It turns out that the Olympic torch is going to pass through this street on the way to Wembley Stadium. On the other hand, the doctor gets into trouble for snooping around someone's house like a thief. Rose and Cal rush to help him out, while Maeve and Trish arrive to defuse the commotion. Once everyone is gathered, the doctor takes out his police badge and mentions that he is a detective sent by the government to solve the missing children's case. When he asks if anyone has any information about the abductions, Maeve steps forward and reveals that an external external force is taking the children away, and she can feel them. The group ignores how sus that was and continues discussing. As they do, Chloe can again be seen, watching everything from her room. She notices a cat and gets back to her desk to start sketching. While she is at it, her mother Trish comes into her room and tries to talk to her. However, the little girl acts unruly and orders Trish to go away as she is busy. Go get my Pop-Tarts and juice. We also see several sketches of her wall, indicating that she has been doing this for quite some time. Outside, the doctor and Rose come across the cat and start playing with it. However, as soon as Chloe finishes her sketch, the cat enters a small box as if it is being called. Surprisingly, it vanishes inside the box, leaving the doctor and Rose stunned. That was some Schrodinger shit. In the next scene, as Rose is investigating the neighborhood alone, she hears a strange noise coming out of one of the houses. Although hesitant, she opens the door, and a large supernatural-looking ball jumps at her. Fortunately, the doctor arrives in the nick of time and neutralizes the ball, hence saving her life. Later, the two take the strange ball to their lab to find out its composition. After a bit of research, the doctor finds out that the ball is actually made of graphite, the same substance that is found in an HB pencil. He also gets to know that the ball is charged with ionic energy, and that is why it came to life. With all the information, the doctor concludes that the ball is just a pencil scribble, which was thrown away after the sketch became useless. Hearing this, Rose chips in with her theory that whoever is making the sketches has the power to either create or erase things from Earth. She also suspects Chloe, as the little girl is the only one who doesn't come out of her house and looks weird all the time. Harsh. The following day, the two arrive outside Chloe's house to meet her, but they are stopped by Trish, who mentions that her daughter is busy. She also looks scared, as if she is hiding something. The doctor senses this and promises to help her daughter, and this time, Trish agrees. After letting them in, Trish reveals that Chloe has been acting strange for the last couple of months. She never leaves her room and scribbles random sketches all day long. Trish also mentions that her husband died a year ago, and they are happy about it, since 
he was a very bad person. As the three continue discussing, Rose asks for a bathroom break and heads upstairs. There, she notices Chloe getting outside her room and quickly hides. After the little girl is out of sight, Rose heads into her room and notices the weird sketches on the wall. She also hears an unusual noise coming from the closet. When she opens it, she is taken aback to witness a talking entity. The entity is a scary looking sketch made on the wall and it keeps on saying, I'm coming. <laughs> okay. Meanwhile, the doctor meets with Chloe and tries to interrogate her, but the girl again says that she's busy. Suddenly, he hears Rose's scream and rushes upstairs. On reaching, he sees the entity trying to come out of the closet and immediately closes it. Trish also arrives and gets angry that the two have barged into her daughter's room without permission. Just then, Chloe reveals that the entity inside the closet is her father and that she sketched it after she saw him in her dream. Worried, Trish asks her what's going on, but as usual, Chloe does not respond. After this, the two time travelers brief Trish on everything that has been happening with her daughter. They mention how Chloe has been using her sketches to make kids and animals disappear from her neighborhood. As expected, Trish is dumbfounded to hear all this, but deep down inside, even she knows that something is terribly wrong with her daughter. Later, the three head to the kitchen and discuss the matter at hand. Trish is confused as to why Chloe drew her dead father, to which the doctor replies that he has been haunting the little girl in her dreams. Then, to find more answers, they again head back to the little girl's room. However, this time, the doctor uses one of his spells to render Chloe unconscious so that he can talk to the entity that is possessing her. Lo and behold, the entity starts speaking and continuously mentions that it doesn't want to be alone. It then identifies itself as an isolus, a supernatural being that travels through space with its large family. Two months ago, this particular isolus became separated from its family when a large solar flare damaged its pod and sent it flying to to Earth. Rose and Trish can't understand why the Isolus took over Chloe's body, but the doctor clarifies that these creatures live off their family's energy and that if they are separated for too long, they will die. The Isolus befriended Chloe because she had a troubled childhood and is lonely, just like it is. The Isolus has also caused Chloe to draw a life-sized, exaggerated figure of her late abusive father. He further mentions that the Isolus will continue kidnapping children and other animals until it can match the numbers of their large family. Family. Rose asks about the number, and the doctor replies, 4 billion. This means that the Isolus will keep using Chloe to kidnap children until it has 4 billion family members. Chloe should just draw a bunch of rats and murder hornets. That would be a win-win-win. Just then, Chloe's father's entity inside the closet starts banging on the door. At the same time, Chloe starts having a panic attack, as if her father is attacking her mentally. With time running out, the doctor tells Trish to think of something that can calm her daughter down. Not knowing what to do, Trish starts singing the Kookaburra song, and fortunately, it works. The entity goes silent, and Chloe comes back to life. After a while, the doctor and Rose head out to look for the pod that brought the Isolus to Earth. The plan is to repair the pod so that the Isolus can return to its original family. Surprisingly, Chloe is following them everywhere they go. Later, the two head back to their lab and start creating a device that can track the heat movements of the pod and reveal its location. The task is not easy, but using his incredibly complex brain, the doctor prepares the device and finds out that the pod is hiding somewhere in the same neighborhood. However, just as they enter the area through their teleportation portal. The doctor and the portal disappear into thin air. It turns out that Chloe has sketched the doctor as he was becoming a major obstacle in her plans. Now, with her master gone, Rose has to solve the case alone. What if Chloe draws Rose too? In the next scene, Rose hurries to the streets and starts looking for the pod. A few hours pass by, but she doesn't find a single clue. Suddenly, it strikes her mind that the pod feeds off heat energy, meaning that it must be repairing itself in the hottest part of the neighborhood. She then approaches Kel, the maintenance worker, and asks him the location of the largest pothole he fixed recently. Kel thinks for a while and points at a nearby place where he deposited a lot of hot tar. Wasting no time, Rose grabs an axe and starts digging. Her plan comes to fruition as just after a few minutes, she finds the pod. Elsewhere, Chloe watches the television and sees thousands of people in Wembley Stadium waiting to witness the opening ceremony of the 2012 Olympics. Unsurprisingly, this strikes an idea in her mind and she starts sketching the entire stadium. Shortly after, Rose arrives at the house with the pod, but it's too late. Around 80,000 people in the stadium have disappeared into thin air and the news is being broadcast live on television. Sadly, this is still not enough for the Isolus and it orders Chloe to sketch the entire 
Earth so that it can abduct everyone and make a large family. Rose tries to stop Chloe, but the entity inside the closet threatens to come out if she gets near the child. With all hope now seemingly lost, a sketch inside the room suddenly moves. It is the doctor's sketch, and even while being abducted, he has managed to communicate with Rose. In the sketch, she is pointing at the Olympic torch. At the same time, the television also starts showing the Olympic torch rally, which is nearing the neighborhood. The reporter says that the torch is a beacon of hope, integrity, and love. As soon as Rose hears this, she realizes that the doctor is signaling her to throw the pod inside the Olympic torch, as love is the only thing that can repair it. She immediately heads outside and joins the large crowd that is waiting for the Olympic rally to arrive. Once she sees the torch, she throws the pod into the air, and it lands exactly at the right spot. With this, the Isolus inside Chloe's body realizes that the pod is about to be fixed and decides to return home. After it leaves her body, Chloe returns back to normalcy and hugs her mother. The other abducted children also start reappearing, and even the entire Wembley Stadium is filled with the previously abducted spectators. Rose celebrates her victory with Kel. But when the doctor does not reappear, she becomes worried. Just then, she hears a monstrous scream from Chloe's house and rushes to it. It turns out that the Isolus had left a small amount of energy behind, and using it, the entity from the closet has come out. It has trapped the mother-daughter duo inside and is coming to finish them off. Rose, realizing that the entity is merely a lump of energy, tells Chloe to stay strong and sing her favorite song. Although scared, the little girl starts singing the kookaburra song, and her mother joins in too. The plan works, because the demon can't stand the sound of their singing, and it is pushed back inside its world forever. In the final scene, the television shows that the man carrying the Olympic torch is exhausted and injured. Just as he is about to reach the Wembley Stadium, he collapses to the ground. Surprisingly, the doctor pops up out of nowhere, carries the torch, and heads to its designated destination. As the crowd and the entire world cheers on, he climbs up the stairs of the stadium and lights the Olympic flame. <laughs> Did the first torchbearer just die, or? The movie ends as the pod finally generates enough energy to travel back to its own galaxy. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.